everyone, here is our reading comprehension for today, for Tuesday the 19th of January. Okay, to warm up our skimming and scanning brains, the first thing that I would like you to do today is, I would like you to time yourself again with this activity. This is the final time that we're going to be looking at this skimming and scanning activity because I've got a new one for next time. Now, look at all the words on the screen. You've got 60 seconds, which is the same as one minute. And I would like you to make me a list of all of the things that you might find in a kitchen. All of the things you might find in a kitchen. Now, if I'm skinning and skimming and scanning from the top row, I can see kettle, oven, I would carry on, I can see plate and so on. I've really started you off this time with three. I normally only do one. Give yourself one minute to skim and scan for all of the items that you might find in a kitchen. Now, you might find that it's easier today because this is the third or fourth time that you've seen these words. So your brain now might be starting to memorize where the words are. 60 seconds, can you find everything that you might find in a kitchen? Off you go, pause the video now. Okay, here is our text for today. And I know what you are probably thinking, oh, Miss Buckley, it is so long. There are so many words on this page. Now, it's not really that long. It just looks quite long because what I've done is I've put all of the story together on one page because those of you who like to print out the text, I didn't want you having to print out lots and lots of pieces of paper. So it looks that long, but it's not actually that long. Now, the way that I've set this out today, it's a little bit like a newspaper. I've set it out in columns. So when we read, we're going to be reading down this column first, and then we will read down this column next. Okay, now the text today is called Doris the Loris. It's a story. I've just told you it's a story. So will this be a work of fiction or non-fiction? It'll be a work of fiction, won't it? It's been made up. I'm going to read through it just like always, and then we will answer some questions together. Let's get started. In our text today, we are going to read about some of the animals that live in a rainforest. So I just wanted to show you a few of them on the screen now, so that when you're reading through the text today, or you're listening to me read the text, you can have a better image in your mind of what the animals are because you might not have come across them before. So the first one that's over this side is a pangolin. Now they are pretty much anteaters, but with scales, they're quite scaly. Um, I don't know if you can see that there on the screen, if that's showing up well. So that's a pangolin. This is a gibbon and this is a type of monkey. And we meet a character who's a gibbon in the text. Now this is a loris and Doris, our main character, she is one of these animals. They look to me like a little bit of a cross between a meerkat, a monkey and a bat, and they like to live in trees as well. And they're very cute, look at those lovely eyes. And then the final animal that you'll read about today is the hornbill, a beautiful majestic bird. Look at how proud that he's standing there on that branch. So I just wanted to show you a few images of the animals that we'll encounter in our story today. Okay. Let's start to read our text, Doris the Loris. Doris the Loris was a storyteller. From true stories to adventure stories and silly stories to love stories, Doris had a story for everyone. Every evening, Cam the Cuckoo sang to announce that story time was about to begin. Creatures from all around came to Doris's tree and waited for her words to spark their imaginations. Late one afternoon, Pootoo the pangolin was on his way to story time. He spotted Geeta the gibbon up in the trees. Why don't you join us for a story, Geeta? He asked. Doris will sweep you away on adventures that you've never dreamed of. I've told you before, Swinging is all the adventure I need, said Geeta. Stories are boring. I will change your mind one day, said Pootoo, as he trotted off. 
Doris told an exciting tale of a tiger who had bravely rescued its friend from a rushing river. Great story, said Putu afterwards. It's a shame that I couldn't persuade Gita to come and listen. She never stops swinging long enough to hear the whole thing, said Doris. If only we could find a way to take a story to her. It's funny you should say that, squawked Heart of the Hornbill. I wish that I could take your stories home to settle my babies at night. I can never remember the endings. They headed off on their way, but an idea was forming in Doris's mind. She needed to find a way for her friends to take her stories with them wherever they went. Early the next morning, Doris headed off to put her plan into action. She found a big green leaf on the forest floor. I wonder, thought Doris. Doris tried to make marks on the leaf using mud, but it was too oozy. She tried to sketch marks using a stick, but the leaf kept tearing. Then Doris noticed some purple berries lying on the ground. A feather floated down from a nest above and she knew what to do. Doris spent the rest of the day working hard to create her first three books. To start with, she wrote an adventure story for Gita. It was about a gibbon setting a world record for swinging from the tallest tree. Next, she wrote a rhyming story about rhinos to give the baby hornbills. Finally, she wrote a non-fiction book about Putu's favourite tree, the rainbow eucalyptus. She delivered the books and hoped that their readers would be as excited as she was. The next day, Doris had a surprise visitor. Putu was right, said Gita. Your stories aren't boring. It's great being able to read them on the go. Do you have any more? Just then, Harter flew past. Thank you for the story, Doris, he shrieked. My babies have never slept so well. Do you have any more? A smile began to creep across Doris's face. No one saw Doris for days. No one except for the glowworms, whose light helped her to work through the night. Then one evening, Cam's call floated across the rainforest again. Story time, called Putu, running towards Doris's tree with a host of other creatures. He was pleased to see that Gita was swinging along with them. But Doris was nowhere to be seen. Instead, there was a sign on the door. Look what the sign says, library this way. So because her stories are so amazing, she's written lots of books for the animals and she's created a library. The creatures found Doris waiting for them all to arrive. And there in the tree beside her were hundreds and hundreds of books. Every story that Doris had ever told was captured on beautiful green leaves, along with some brand new ones. You can come and borrow them whenever you like, said Doris. Then when you finish, just bring them back for someone else to read. The creatures were thrilled and the new rainforest library was soon buzzing with readers. There was a book for everyone. Doris became the first ever rainforest author and librarian. She had found her dream job, bringing happiness to all of her friends every day through the magic of reading. What a beautiful story. We are going to look at the first four questions together and then I would like you to have a go at the next set of questions by yourself. So here are the first four questions. I'm going to read them aloud and then we're going to find the answers in the text. So the first question says, what is Doris the Loris? So we need to skim and scan the text to find out what is it that she does. The second one says, when does Doris tell her stories? So we need to find the time. Number three says, find and copy a word that shows us what Keita thinks about stories at the beginning of the new book. I think I remember that one, but I'm still going to skim and scan. And then number four says, find and copy a word that has been used instead of said. So let's have a look at those first four questions all together. Here we are. So the first question says, what is Doris the Loris? It's the first question. I'm going to look near the top of the text. Doris the Loris was a storyteller. So 
for number one, pause the video and answer the question. I'm not going to write it out because it's very difficult to write on the video, but she is a storyteller. The word is here, so you need to write down the answer. Pause the video and write it down. Okay, question number two. When does Doris tell her stories? So it's a when question. So I know that I'm going to be looking for a time, aren't I? Either a day or a time, something like that. So from true stories to adventure stories and silly stories to love stories, Doris had a story for everyone. Every evening, Cam the Cuckoo sang to announce that story time was about to begin. Amazing. So the answer must be every evening. That would be the answer. Every evening. Again, I'm not going to write out the whole word. It's tricky on the video, but you guys can write it down now. Pause the video and write it down. Number three, find and copy a word that shows us what Gita thinks about stories at the beginning of the new book. OK, let's carry on reading. Cam the Cuckoo sang to announce that story time was about to begin. Creatures from all around came to Doris's tree and waited for her words to spark their imaginations. Late one afternoon, Pootoo the pangolin was on his way to story time. He spotted Gita the gibbon up in the trees. Why don't you join us for a story, Gita? he asked. Doris will sweep you away on adventures that you've never dreamed of. I've told you before, swinging is all the invent adventure I need. Stories are boring. <gasps> what word shows us what Gita thinks about the story? <gasps> boring. So it's find and copy. So you will just write the word boring on the line there. Pause the video, write the word. Okay, question number four says find and copy a word that's been used instead of said. Now, I know that I need to go back a little bit in the text here because when um, Putu the pangolin is speaking to Gita, he says this. Why don't you join us for a story? He asked. So which word in the text has been used instead of said? Asked. So you're going to write the word asked on the line. Again, highlight it, circle it colour it, whatever you want to do in the text so that you know how to answer the question. It's asked. Well done, everyone. OK, so I do want today's activity to be a little bit more independent than how we've done it before. So I'm actually just going to read the next two questions to you. And then I would really like you to have a go at finding the answer yourself. So the first question, number five there says, what does Cam the Cuckoo's song announce every evening? Now, the key words in that question are the name of the cuckoo, Cam the Cuckoo. You need to skim and scan the text and find Cam the Cuckoo and find out what her song or his song, I'm not sure if it's a boy or a girl, what their song announces at, store, at every evening Miss Buckley nearly told you the answer then. What does Cam the Cuckoo's song announce every evening? Read around what I've underlined there and answer the question now. OK, we're going to look at question six now. In question six, we need to look at the top of the page where you can see Doris is writing beautifully on her leaf with her feather. And we've got to order Doris's books from one to three to show the order that she writes them. So I need to look in the text for the information that tells me the order that she writes the books in. So I'm actually going to start reading from the top of the text here where it says Doris. And I'm looking, I'm just going to write them onto my slide now. I'm looking at ordering them one, two and three. One being the first book that she writes, two being the second and three being the third. So. I'm going to read the text and hopefully you can figure out which one she writes first, second and third. Here are the options, though, just before I read, actually. A rhyming story for the baby hornbills, a non-fiction book for Pootoo, 
or an adventure story for Gita. Let's find which one she does first. Doris spent the rest of the day working hard to create her first three books. To start with, she wrote an adventure story for Gita. So I know that that one must be number one. It was about a gibbon setting a world record for swinging from the tallest tree. Next, she wrote a rhyming story about rhinos to give the baby hornbills. Finally, she wrote a non-fiction book about Putu's favourite tree, the rainbow eucalyptus. Pause the video here and fill in the other two. Which one is second? Which one is third? OK, over to you now, everybody. I'm going to read out these three questions that are on the screen, but I'm not going to go through the answers now. I would like you to answer them independently. That means on your own, if you can. Number seven says, how is Doris feeling when she delivers the book to her friends? How is she feeling when she delivers the book to her friends? Now, number eight says, draw three lines to match each word to its meaning. So on the left hand side, we've got three words. And on this side, we've got three meanings. You need to read the words and read the meanings and match them up. Now remember, when we're matching up, it's not spaghetti junction. It's just from one side to the other, nice and neatly. Okay, and then number nine says, what does Doris do so that she can share her stories with everyone? What does Doris do so that she can share her stories with everyone? What does she create so that everybody can share her stories? I would really like you now to have a go at the final three questions on your own. <laughs> 